Hello, dear Film City Virtual Film Festival team. I'm greeting you from Düsseldorf in Germany. My name is Miriam Thies. I'm a visual artist and I'm originally from Switzerland and from Luxembourg. So both small European countries, but I have been living in Düsseldorf in Germany for the last more than 30 years. I thank you very much for the best editing award you have given me for my video Zurich Scenes. I'm a visual artist. I'm working mostly with digital media like video art, animation, computer animation and digital imagery. I studied at the Academy of Fine Arts in Düsseldorf, first painting and later video art. When I first learned how to work with video, this was not digital. We worked with umatic low band videotapes, you know, the old magnetic tapes. And at that time, in the beginning of the 90s, umatic low band was a good standard, but still, editing meant copying. So every time you wanted to edit a video, this meant you had to copy from one tape to another one and in the middle there was the so-called time base corrector and if you were lucky you had an effect device so to to use more effects and shapes and keying effects but that that was it and there was not so much possible so after completing my studies in 1992 my partner and me inspired by our Bangladeshi friend Hasnat Mia we traveled to Bangladesh for three months. I took my video Hi8 camcorder with me and my partner his sound recording instrument. It was a, a Sony uh, microphone and a recorder. Our idea was to learn as much as possible about Bangladesh, its people, their work, their way of living, and then to produce a documentary. But my partner was a journalist and I was a video artist, so we both were no experts in documentary filmmaking. Still, we went there and with the help of Hasnat Mia's family, like Hosneara and Hasna and many political friends also at that time from the uh, student, uh, political student movements, they helped us to get into factories, to meet people from any profession, like farmers, fishermen, but also poets, like uh, people in literature or from the government. So from various kinds of uh, society, we met people and we talked to hundreds. We uh, took interviews, I was filming, my partner recorded the sound, and when we came back, we had to make a script for a documentary. So we both relied on the diaries that we had written during our three months stay in Bangladesh. And we had some friends from Bangladesh. They translated for us the talking in the video recordings. Because the interviews between Bangladeshi language and English was sometimes very complicated, so we wanted to know more exactly what the people had told us. Later I completed the script alone, and I was then the director of this documentary, and I edited it together with a professional video editor. I have to explain the technical process. The high 8 originals, my recordings, had to be transferred to Umatic High Band and then copied, uh, in order to edit the film, we had to copy from Umatic High Band to Umatic High Band. And even years later, I did digitize this Better Come Again, and now, finally, you can watch it on Vimeo, the documentary, but it is all in German, but still it's there, but the image quality, of course, is a bit poor. It's not what it was in, in, in the beginning, when the Hi8 recordings were fresh. Through my experience in Bangladesh, I learned a lot 
about cultures, about Asia, about myself and about filmmaking. But I did not stay with the documentary filmmaking, I went back to art, to the visual arts, painting, drawing and video art and animation. So years after my studies, in order to continue working with video and animation, I had to learn all the digital technologies from scratch. Through courses, hands-on trainings in multimedia agencies, and also through books, of course, I learned about uh, fine Apple Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, then animation tools that nowadays nobody knows. At that time, you can imagine, there were no YouTube videos to teach you, no tutorials in the internet. Within the last 20 years, I have produced several video art installations, animations, participatory projects. As I'm not a typical filmmaker, I don't use actors or uh, film studios with uh, special lights and spotlights. I don't use a written scripts or uh, costumes. So all the things that you know from uh, normal professional filmmaking, I'm hardly ever using. I try to do everything by myself, from the camera to the editing, and only for the sound. I sometimes ask some sound artists or musicians to donate or uh, sell me the use of some of their pieces, or I even commission sometimes someone to produce a sound or a music for one of my animations or videos. Whenever I use found footage, it is a quotation. It means I use the found footage in order to comment on the footage I use. Sometimes I take very short scenes from Hollywood movies in order to comment on those movies and on the heroes or myths or ideologies that are uh, hidden within these movies. My themes and visual researches deal with myths, symbols, strong signs of coming from uh, society, politics, entertainment industry, films, architecture, religions. Like every public symbol can become an inspiration for me. Also because I often oppose its meanings. So what I want to do is tear down the authority of uh, strong ideas and symbols. Using video, animation, collage, abstraction and found footage, well-known figures undergo transformations. They start to communicate and build new relations. Symbols of identities turn into elements of dialogues. For your festival and award, you have chosen my video Zurich scenes. Zurich in Switzerland is the city where I have grown up. Although I'm living in Germany, I return to Zurich on a regular basis. From 2010 to 2014, I took a lot of video recordings secretly, I operated in the shadows, in order to grab many aspects of the society of Zurich that interested me. During the following years, I used only very few of the recorded material in order not to show people living in Zurich uh, while they are maybe still looking the same way or living in the same place, so I preferred to let time pass. Around 2014, I started thinking about how to produce a multi-screen video art installation with my material from Zurich. I also looked for an idea how to show the suppressed and maybe negative aspects of Zurich. The money in Zurich, which is so much in this rich city, also produces a lot of crimes. The economic crimes, the crimes of the banks, 
and drug crimes. Towards the end of the first year of the pandemic, in November 2020, I finally had the idea how I could express these suppressed aspects of Zurich, namely through the character Alien of the movies. It is designed by Hans Rudi Giger. Giger was an artist from Zurich. He lived in Zurich while he created the Alien. So the Alien was for me the perfect symbol. Also technology changed. So it was not interesting anymore for me to uh, make a HD multi-screen installation because now 4K or Ultra HD is the standard. Combining four HD video recordings or images into one 4K video image also fits very well with the city of Zurich because Zurich is so uh, densely populated the traffic is not maybe fast but it is everything is narrow and too many people live in this still rather small city so the density and the continuous activity especially in summer is uh, well represented through these four images together where everything everything happens at the same time my latest project is called Trisolaris Chinoiserie. A Chinoiserie is a historic phenomenon in European courtly culture, mainly during the 16th till 18th century. The term means European interpretation and imitation of Chinese and other East Asian artistic traditions, especially in the decorative arts, garden design, architecture, literature, theatre and music. My animation is about a chinoiserie castle in Dresden. It is called Pilnitz Castle and the frescoes on the facade of the Pilnitz Palace, which shows so-called scenes from China. And then I transform these images these chinoise images of the Baroque era to present-day sceneries from China. So, of course, my work is a chinoiserie too, because I've never been to China and my Western views or my informations, which I can receive through literature, the news media, uh, the internet, YouTube or, or other media from, about China, this is what I can know here. It is, of course, not the view of a Chinese person. I call it Trisolaris Chinoiserie as an homage to the science fiction novelist Xi Xin Liu, a Chinese a famous writer who wrote the three books, the Trisolaris trilogy. I use only small fragments of each fresco and each fragment turns into an animation, flash animation, nowadays it is called Adobe Animate, but is the program is still the same vector animation as a flash. And this means also a transfer of the technology. So first I use the 3D software Blender in order to create spheres like planets. On these planets I put fragments of the Baroque frescoes Motifs from the frescoes on these planets morph into sceneries from present China. the good photographs of the frescoes I received only end of May 2021 and already in middle of August our exhibition in the castle was supposed to start. So I had only literally two months to complete the researches, 
the drawings, the animations and then the three-channel video installation for this exhibition. The exhibition in Pilnitz Palace is a kind of an intervention. We are four visual artists showing our works in between the normal settings of the castle. I wish to develop this animation further. So now I have to wait for more photos from more frescoes from the other palace. Because Pilnitz Palace consists of three palaces and a large park. And unless I receive these photos, I cannot continue my researches and my animation. Your festival team have also asked me to give some advice or tips to newcomers, to new filmmakers or young artists. So the only advice I can give is never be afraid of new challenges and never stop learning. Goodbye and thank you for everything.